So you're looking for a motorcycle, but not just any old motorcycle, you want a motorcycle that's retro. A motorcycle that looks old and that sends you back to a time way before you even lived. Maybe it's the styling, maybe it's the simplicity of it all, but here's the thing. You're probably already researching, maybe watching videos, maybe reading articles, and you keep getting the same suggestions. Royal Enfield Interceptor, Triumph Bonneville, Royal Enfield Continental GT, Triumph Bonneville. I'm guessing some of you have heard of some of these bikes that I'm going to talk about today, but I'd be shocked if any of you have heard of all of them, and that's really the point. I want this video to help those of you who just want more options. So without further ado, let's look at eight retro motorcycles you've probably never heard of. There will be links in the description below for all of these motorcycles if you want to check them out yourself, and let's get into it. First on our list is the Heritage Range of Bikes by AJS Motorcycles. See, I told you there'd be some on here that you didn't know about. Look at how cool these bikes are. Now, there is a whole history behind AJS that I'm not going to get into, but the main thing is this was a British motorcycle company from way back in the day, and now they're company again, and they're making really cool, awesome little bikes. They're all 125s, they're all air-cooled single cylinders producing about 10 horsepower. They all have electric and kickstarts, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. Not many new motorcycles have a kickstart, and if you like retro, you might like that. My personal favorite is the Cadwell 125. The tank almost looks like the Continental GT's tank, but with higher handlebars, you know, it's not that full-on cafe racer style. Yeah, the only bike on the road you'll be able to compete with is a Grom in terms of speed, but who cares? That's not why you're buying a motorcycle anyways. And you should know, if you're getting a 125 or any of the other smaller bikes on this list, you're probably not going to want to take something like this onto the highway because it's going to be light and obviously not fast enough. All right, number seven on this list goes to Matisse Motorcycles. Now, there is also a whole long history behind this company as well, but I want to just focus on the bikes they have available. There's the MK3, which is equipped with a vintage Triumph engine, and the MK5, which actually has its own Matisse engine. And as this is really about modern classics, that's more sort of a modern engine, and that seems to fit more with what we're looking at than, say, you know, a custom bike with an old Triumph engine. Now, the MK5 is actually a very powerful engine for this segment, producing just shy of 100 horsepower from a 997cc engine. Now, if you want to buy this bike, you're going to have to get in touch with Matisse. Again, a lot of these companies aren't just like a major company where you can just show up at a dealership or order a motorcycle online. You might have to do a little bit more work, and you're also probably going to spend a bit more as well. Number six goes to a company called Cleveland Cycle works based out of, you guessed it, Toronto. Just kidding, they are in Cleveland. Now this is such a cool company, they make some really rad retro motorcycles, and the great thing is, unlike the last two companies, they will actually make you an affordable cool bike and it will ship directly to your door for a reasonable price. These are 250cc bikes, they produce about 17 horsepower, and they also have 400s which are just shy of 30 horsepower, so pretty solid numbers, you know, more than enough for most riders. But more than anything, these are just really cool bikes and they're not overpriced, like really not overpriced at all. Also everything I've seen from Cleveland Cycle Works is just cool, they have some really cool bikes and they just seem like a really great company in general. Number five on my list is really the last sort of specialty sort of boutique motorcycle brand that we're going to talk about in this video but it is so cool I had to show you guys this is Falcon LA and Falcon LA is doing something different I wouldn't even really call this retro they're sort of making like modern vintage motorcycles Falcon basically takes old famous engines like this bike that has a Vincent twin in it and they made a custom motorcycle around it that is of super high quality and just really awesome there's also this bike called the white which has a Velocet Thruxton engine in it so this is very different you're sort of getting a vintage motorcycle in somewhat of a modern package and they're just really like harnessing that power plant but man they are cool and you can't deny they are retro the thing is they're also probably incredibly expensive <laughs> all right number four on the list is the Ural and I'm guessing many of you have probably heard of Ural or are familiar with it but if not Ural is basically a modern sidecar company that's right it's all sidecar bikes so when you see that price tag remember it's partially because you're not just getting a motorcycle Cycle, you're also getting an entire sidecar with it. I'm assuming you can probably take the sidecar off if you want. That would be pretty dumb if you couldn't, but these are pretty cool modern retro bikes and most people haven't heard of them. They're not fast and you know they're a bit pricey, but they're very cool. All right, number three goes to a small company in Goshen, Indiana, making what are, in my opinion, some of the most unique motorcycles on this list, and that is Janus Motorcycles. So Janus actually harkens back further than the 60s and 70s in terms of the style they're trying to capture with bikes that really look even older, almost like 30s, 40s American bikes. 
Janus is cool because you can't really pin just one era on them. With bikes like the Bonneville and the Interceptor, it's all very 60s and they're basically just copying a specific bike. But these bikes are really their own in terms of style, but yet they look very old. Janus produces smaller 250cc bikes, but they are now releasing a 450, which is pretty exciting. Janus's engines are sourced out of China, I believe, much like some of the other bikes on this list. It's possible to design a new frame and a gas tank and other things like that, but it's really difficult to actually make a completely new engine. So Janus has the Griffin, the Halcyon, and the Phoenix, all retro, but all very different, especially than what we see like in this segment. The bikes are a bit expensive for what they are, but that's just the nature of buying a motorcycle from a small, local, and in this case, American company. All right, number two goes to Mutt Motorcycles, and in terms of specs, these are similar to Janus and some of the other ones we mentioned. These are engines sourced from China, and then the rest of the bike basically is completely original. And man, I have to tell you, these are some of the coolest retro bikes available today. Mutt has a wide range of 125 and 250cc bikes, and they're really the epitome of cool retro. They look like something out of the 60s but they also look modern. These bikes are fuel injected, they make reasonable power for how small they are and for being single cylinder bikes, and they sound amazing. Just for fun, go and look through all the different bikes they have on their website. This will provide plenty of entertainment for the retro motorcycle enthusiast. All right, number one on my list is a bike that I am weirdly obsessed with. It's a bike that stands out not only among retro design bikes, but really all current motorcycles available. This is one of the most unique motorcycles that has come out in the past like 15 years. This is the MV Agusta Super Veloce, hearkening back to a previous time, not of the classic 60s and 70s British like street bikes, but of the 60s and 70s MV Agusta race machines and just Italian design, and specifically the bikes raced by Giacomo Agostini. But it doesn't just look like those race bikes, it's still very modern and different in a completely different take, whereas something like a Triumph Bonneville today is basically a copy of an old Bonneville. But there's a few main reasons I love this bike. First, it is hearkening back to a type of motorcycle that modern retro bikes just don't seem to care about. And I do think that one of the problems with modern retro bikes is there are all sorts of cool old bikes that just don't get sort of implemented into the modern retro style. It seems like they all are just trying to look like the same bike. Second, this is a truly modern bike producing 140 horsepower. It's got all the gadgets, unbelievable Italian quality and all that Italian engineering and one of the best sound and also power producing triple engines available today. Now you might look at a bike like this and think, nah, I don't like sport bikes, but listen to me. Just give it a bit to sit with you, go watch some videos of people riding and talking about this bike, and maybe it'll start to get a hold of you the way it has me. I'm not actually going to buy this bike, but I really like it for some reason. And then when you're done watching all those videos, just go out and take a loan out for $28,000. Yeah, this one's a bit pricey. <laughs> Alright, there you have it, some retro motorcycles you can buy today that you might not have heard of. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, but more importantly, check out my other videos and see if there are any videos there that might tickle your fancy. Alright guys, we'll see you in the next one, ride safe.